What's your name? Bradbury, Martin Bradbury. And you? Ron. Ron Clark. Are you hungry, Mr. Bradbury? The kitchen just closed, but I got some cinnamon rolls that just came out of the oven. Beer come with that, then I'm in. I don't see why not. Would you like me to take your coat, sir? Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Anything else I can get for you, sir? How about you join me? I hate you in folks. No, not at all. You've been very generous with your hospitality. I'd like to buy you a drink. No, sir. I don't drink, but if you ask me to sit with you, it would be my pleasure. Please, Rob. You own this place, Ron? No, it's my brother-in-law, Will's place. Me and my sister Dee looking at properties out west. They're looking to expand. Expand? They consider filling out this place, Ron? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, they aren't ones to take advice, much less ask for it. So I just come down to help from time to time. Let me guess, say hello. Not many other weary travelers like me, Ron, no? Not usually, no. But it can get a little busy around the holidays. It's a small town. I gotcha. Who like those girls having some good times? I suppose. They're in town for some concert. Some boy I never heard of. Isn't that funny? We all get behind a curveball a little bit, don't we? Mm -hmm. I don't know none of these things, these kids, what they do. I'm always a little bit behind on what's hit. An old soul. So what brings you to town? Business. What sort of business, if you don't mind me asking? I was a police detective for a long time. A police detective? Sounds like quite the occupation. Oh, it certainly was. Catch a lot of bad guys? Once in a while, some have more questions than answers, Ron. You know how it is in the big city. Which city did you work in? Boston. A lot of people up to no good, you know, fucking savages. Any good stories? No crime story is a good story, Ron. Well, what did you get? You seem a little young to retire. You seem a little fucking young to be around a hotel, Ron. Ah. Let's keep it light. Wouldn't want to ruin a good conversation. You wouldn't be. I'm just curious, I suppose. There's not a whole lot of Boston action in these kinds of places. It's a small town. All right, Ron. You want to know what that man? Husband and wife murdered suicide. Oh, my God. What happened? I'll never forget. Her name was Sheila. She was a housewife. No fucking college degree. Her husband, Roy, was a breadwinner. He was a town agent, but he traveled a lot. Corporate office, that's all he said. What Shield didn't know was that every time he'd go up to corporate, he'd fuck his pretty young receptionist. Barely legal. Her father was Roy Superior. Hmm. It didn't take long before Sheila figured him out. She confronted him. He got aggressive. She was afraid. He could hurt her without even trying. So she picked up a knife and told him to back the fuck off. He hit her as hard as he could, right in the face. 
He grabbed the hold of the knife and tossed it across the room. He charged her. He started to strangle her. I don't think he meant to do it, but he squeezed the fucking life right out of her. He knew he was guilty, but he couldn't bring himself to suicide, especially he couldn't turn himself into the police. He decided to leave it into the hands of whatever god he worshipped and played a little game of Russian roulette. I guess his god had a sense of humor. The blast woke up the ten-year-old son who had to witness his father's head sprayed all over the room and his poor mother dead. I'll never forget poor Sheila's eyes, wide open, petrified in the most terrifying moment of her life. I guess they just remind me of how my own marriage could have been. So what happened to the kid? I wouldn't know, Ron. He hasn't said shit in five years. I visit him from time to time in the institution that he's in. You know, it was his birthday. You know what I got him, Ron? What's that? An etch sketch <laughs> I was just breaking your balls. Poor fucking kid, though. So what do you do these days? Funny you should ask, Ron. That's exactly why I'm here. I'm a P.I. P.I.? Anything like I've seen on television? Not quite. If you don't mind me asking, what brings you here? A woman approached me a few months back. Thought her husband was having an affair. A lot of times these women are bored delusional housewives. But I looked into it. I followed him around town. He was hot and apple. One brought after another. Before I could follow up with her, she disappeared with $60,000 of her husband's money. So I looked further into it. He never pressed any charges against her. As a matter of fact, police just figured the poor bastard got what he deserved. But, you know, it really struck me funny. Ron, was I couldn't find shit about these young ladies. Except for they were underage, 16, but they just vanished. And so did he. started right now, Ron Clark. We can cut the horse shit. Dalvin Brown. Now, I don't know what you did to the people that actually own this place, but they ain't no family of yours. And uh, as far as I'm scouting the property out west, I doubt it. If I had to guess, I'd have to say they're runaways, just like the girls that had the misfortune running into you. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I don't give a shit about none of it. None of them paid me. You know who paid me? Your wife. What'd you do to her, Calvin? Why would I do anything to my wife? She was just the sweetest thing. Wasn't she, Detective? Wasn't she just delicious?
left, you fucking dumb! <laughs> <laughs> I'll save you for later. Egregious intent.